Hi, it's Greg Hughes from 90 Second Website Builder. In this video, I want to talk to you about working with forms. Forms are easy to work with and they're a convenient tool in the 90 Second Website Builder interface that allow you to create a mechanism for your website visitors to communicate with you, the website owner. So a form is basically a collection of fields of data and a submit button so that your user can submit that data to you either by way of an email or some other way of collecting that data and then taking the user once they fill out that form to some kind of a thank you page or a success page. There are a few ways to build forms in 90 Second Website Builder and how you create your form is basically unlimited because there are so many ways to design one and structure what you want. The easiest way to work with forms is probably to go ahead and use the form wizard. I'll walk you through that here in this video just quickly and show you what that means. If you drag a box out onto the canvas and then follow the prompts in 90 Second Website Builder, it's going to give you some options that basically walk you through step by step. One of the things you can do is build a form based on a template and it's a good way to get started especially if you've never made a form before because it gives you some pre-built forms to start with. By clicking the next button, you'll see you'll be presented with a list of pre-built forms. Each one of these forms are just starter templates, so to speak. You don't have to use them exactly the way they are. You can edit them and move things around or use them exactly the way they are if you want to. Uh, you'll see there are a number of forms here. Most of these forms are going to work for you if you are hosting your website with a standard web hosting company that provides PHP. Um, as one of the features of your hosting service. And of course, 99.9% .9 of hosts do. There are some exceptions though. So for example, if you're using GoDaddy's hosting service, they are unique to everyone else. You'll want to start with this form template and then design your form from here, but at least start with this template and then add or remove whatever you want from this form. Or if you're using some of the um, third-party form processing companies like MailMyForm or FormBuddy, 90 Second Website Builder can also work with them. These are great services, actually. Mail My Form, for example, is a service you can use very inexpensively to process your forms for you in a safe and secure way. And if that's the way you want to process forms, you can use 90 Second Website Builder to create your form and send it to your Mail My Form account. So those are just side notes. For the most part, most people are going to just create their own form and, of course, run it through their own web hosting services, PHP. So if all of that sounds technical, don't worry about it. You don't need to know all of that background, how that works. Basically, you just need to follow the prompts, click some buttons, and create a form. So for example, if I wanted to create a form, I might want to start with something simple like, let's say this one, and click the next button, and then click the next button again, and then decide how I want my form processed. This is the part that you need to know about. Most people are going to want to process their form using the built-in PHP form processor, which basically sends the contents of the form that your visitor fills out in the form of an email address to you, the website owner, and then takes them to some kind of a thank you page. It's basically that simple. There are other options for form action here, but most of them are a little bit technical and require you to understand something about coding or programming and sending that data to a script or to a page a certain way. And again, these are advanced. If you know how to use these, you probably don't need this video. So for the most part, most of us are gonna use this built-in PHP form processor. And then there's a place for you to decide where you want the data from this form sent to, what you want that email address to look like because it's coming to you, what the subject line will be, etc. And of course, where their users are going to go once they successfully fill out this form. And then we would click next and finish and complete the process. There's also a prompt that always comes up after you've made a form. And this is a very important message. It says you've enabled a feature which uses PHP scripting. Remember to set your file extension to PHP. What that means is whenever you're working with a PHP object and a form is a PHP object, you want to make sure that you go to your page properties at some point before you're done and change this page to a PHP page. This is really, really important to do. Otherwise, you'll see some funny looking code on your page when the form shows on the internet. So you'll want to do that. And then you can see that 90 Second Website Builder basically created a form for me to work with that I can always go back in and edit. If I double click on the form area, that's what this gray area is called, the form area, I can go in and change the attributes of this form 
any way I want to. Let me talk to you a little bit about these attributes. Again, I'm going to talk to you about the most common way of using a form. All of these other more advanced methods are going to be pretty technical. And if you know how to use those, you probably don't need the video that you're watching right now. But for the people who are going to use the most common form processing, let me show you how that works. You're going to want to make sure this box is checked, of course. The email address that you put in this field needs to be your email address because the form data is coming to you. And it needs to be at an address that's on the same domain that the form is. So in other words, if I were putting this form on my website, 90secondwebsitebuilder.com, I'd want this email address to be something at 90secondwebsitebuilder.com, support at 90secondwebsitebuilder.com, Greg, and whatever. It should be on the same domain. Now, there are some exceptions. There are times when you can have this email sent to a third party, like maybe Gmail. There are exceptions. That works on a case-by-case -case basis. For the most part, the email is going to be better processed if the email address you use here is on the same domain as the website that the form is on. Also, this subject line, as I said, that's going to be what's in the subject line of the email you receive. So basically, you want this to look sensible for you to read because this is going to send you an email every time someone fills out the form on your website. Whatever message you want to say to yourself, you would put here. And then a very important part of it is what page you want your user to be taken to after they have successfully filled out the form. This is really important because if somebody fills out a form and clicks the send button or the submit button or whatever, and then they don't go anywhere, they won't know if their form has been processed or if it's been successful. They, the user needs to feel like they've successfully submitted a form. And also if the user for some reason fills out the form incorrectly and it can't be processed, you have the option of creating an error page. This is where you'd create a page says, sorry, you, you didn't fill out the form correctly. Click here to go back and try it again. So you can actually structure your form that way. Well, how would somebody fill out the form incorrectly? Well, you actually have the option of creating form that has certain rules or validations. The style of the form can be set here, just like the style of any object in 90 Second Website Builder. So the way it looks, in other words, that background gray box can all be changed and the border can all be changed, all of that. If you want a shadow, this is all just the, the aesthetic look of the form can all be done here. This is kind of an advanced setting we'll, we'll go into later in, other, in another uh, video. Also, forms can be used with events and can be used with CSS3 animation. Again, these are advanced topics we won't go into. So that's kind of an overview. Let's take a look at some of the actual objects on the form. So these are all separate objects. This is just considered a button, a, a form button, and we can configure each of these things independently. Now this is the form area. Everything in the form must be in this container in order for the form to work. If you have an object that's outside of the form, even by one pixel, this form is not going to process this data. It has to be in this container called the form area. And now if we double click on these objects, so for example, if I double click on this object, I can bring up some settings specific to this box, specific to this object. I can give it a name. Again, this name isn't seen by the user because we're using labels. This is something that would be seen in the data collection. I can even give it a starting value, a default value. If I wanted to put first name here and expect the user to know that that means put your first name here, I could do that. And what type of data I want the user to use would go here. So in this case, I want it to be text. But I can make that very specific. I can make that be a date or a number or whatever by setting the parameter right here. In most cases, we're going to use text. You can set the maximum length that the user can put into a particular object. And there are some other things that you can play with that we won't go into for the sake of time and that are not as common. Also, you can set the style of these objects just like you can anything else, meaning the background, the border, the text, etc., if it's going to have a shadow. Now, this is an important tab here. This is called validation. Remember, I talked about what if a, a user filled out a form incorrectly. Well, one of the ways a user could fill out the form incorrectly is by not putting in the right amount of data or the right kind of data into the object. For example, you can set the data type to have certain constraints. By default, it has no constraints. They could just put any text into this object. But if you constrain it, you can say, no, that this must be text or it must be a number or it must be an email address in order for the form to go through. 
This is very, very convenient in designing your form so that people don't make mistakes. And if they do make a mistake, you can have the form show a particular message and say, you must enter a valid email address here or whatever. So if we said, this must be an email address, we might want to put that in this error message. You must put a valid email address here. So it prompts the user. It really helps your user fill out the form correctly. Also, you can require certain data length. By clicking this box, you can say, this field must have at least two characters in it and no more than 10, for example. I'm just using that as an example. And therefore, create a constraint of data length with your form's text, or you can make it match another field. So for example, this field must match the same data that's in another field. You would do that here. Here you can create the validation a number of different ways. You may or may not want to use this, but it depends on the kind of form that you're using. In a simple name and email address form, you probably wouldn't use any of this. But if you were designing a more sophisticated form that collected important data, you could see where this would be very handy. And again, events animation can also be applied to these objects. And so can padding. Padding meaning how the, how the form looks as far as um, where the text sits inside this box. So I've gone on about the details of this form and there are so many things you can do i'm really skipping a lot because this is basically an unlimited tool within 90 second website builder that allows you to create some sophisticated things what i think i'm going to do instead i'm going to go ahead and delete this demo and just take you to a form that i've made on one of my pages and we'll talk through the settings that i have on it so this is my page at 90 second website builder.com where i have some frequently asked questions so that people who are thinking about buying this product can go get some answers to their questions. But if they still have unanswered questions, you can see I've made a form on this page that they can fill out. It asks for their name, their email address, and th then there's just a box where they can make any kind of comment or question and then click this button and submit it. So what happens when they do is I get an email. That email tells me their name and email address and what their question is so that I can respond to them in an appropriate way. Now, after they click the submit button, what happens? Well, I have to take them somewhere so that they feel like they have correctly filled out the form and finished the process. So all of that information is inside this form area, which is right here, this gray box. So let me show you how I set this up. I'm gonna double click on the form area. And by the way, these are just text objects, regular text objects I use for labels. I'm going to double click on the form area and you'll see what I've done. Again, we're using the most common setting. We're going to use the built-in PHP form processor because I use Blackwire hosting and Blackwire hosting provides the PHP form processor script so that I can use this. So I've checked this box. When people fill out this form, it sends me an email because I'm support at 90secondwebsitebuilder.com. By the way, I can add more email addresses, CC or BCC, other emails if I wanted to. But this form comes to this address. When I receive this email, it has a subject line that says question from the FAQs page. So I know where it came from. And then there's a message that says here's the value submitted from the form. In other words, it's going to give me in the message part of the email, their name, the email address, and their question because these are the data values. That's what's going to be submitted in the form. And then they're going to be taken to a success page. Now, this is not the right one. So I'm going to select the right success page they're going to be taken to. They're actually going to be taken to a page I've called thanks form right here. So I'm going to select that, click OK. And now I've set up the thanks page or the success page. So after the user fills out the form, they're going to be taken to a page called thanks underscore form dot HTML, a page I made specially just for the thank you page of this form. Let me click OK and let me open up that thank you page. It's called thanks form. I'm double clicking over on the site manager off screen here and I brought up this page thanks underscore form, which just I'm still working on, by the way, it's kind of a blank page. It just says, thanks, your questions or comments have been submitted. And then basically repeats the frequently asked questions page that they came from. So they're actually going from this page, filling out the form. When they click submit, they land on this page which will say thanks, your question and comments have been submitted. And of course, I'll probably add some more design to it so they don't have this big blank spot. But the point is, they have some place to go. Okay, so I realize there's been a lot of information in this video about forms. I've tried to cover some of the basic stuff for you, but forms can be as simple or as complex as you want them to be. In other videos, I will cover more advanced uses of forms because forms can utilize databases, 
MySQL database, CSV files. They can connect with scripts on a server. And the reason all of this sounds technical is because it is, because they can do very advanced things. But for most of us, we're going to use a form in a very simple way. And so I recommend using the form wizard, starting with a basic form and then editing it the way you want and having that information sent to the email address um, that you want to collect that data from so that your visitors can interact with you from the websites that you build with 90 Second Website Builder.